So welcome guys to another Zavik Spotlight video and today with us we have Christian and uh, you have quite a bit experience with not so small Zabbix installations, big Zabbix installations, complicated installations with some containers, Kubernetes, uh, a lot of different stuff. So what's the actually uh, biggest environment in, in some way that you have been worked on? Like, um, I don't know, maybe based on amount of the hosts or items or just the raw new values per second values? For us, it's not it's not the size in terms of hosts monitor that makes a Zabbix installation big and complex. Um, because we are doing many like migration projects or uh, new implementations for, for small, big and even very big customers. But the complexity of the installations, um, they are more because of the of the distributed way of, uh, of, of monitoring that, that might be necessary less than the, the vast amount of, of monitored hosts. And the biggest installation we have been dealing with was, was actually not the, the most complicated one. Um, and it was around 15,000 hosts only, I have to say, because I know that there is a l much larger installations out there. Um, but yeah, 15,000-ish around. Okay, and uh, talking about like implementing those projects from the scratch or maybe doing some migration, of course, architecture of environment also depends like on the size of it, how many devices and stuff that are we actually going to monitor. Uh, do you have some like advices on how can we actually estimate in the beginning, in the first steps, how big our en environment is going to be? Because uh, pretty often some, some new companies uh, start with the monitoring and they just don't know. They have, okay, we have this, our our business, our company, plenty of stuff, we need to monitor it. So you as an expert, please say as like how big it's gonna be. I would say how, however big you calculate your Zavix environment to be, at the same amount on top, right from the beginning. Because in the, in the real life, when the users start to get the, the benefits of, of Zabbix and all the possibilities that you have, everything that you planned from the beginning will grow at least by double. So you will have the double amount of items and, and triggers and a lot of, um, yeah, the, the installations always get much bigger than, than expected initially. And of course, there is metrics on, on which to calculate our, how big such a, a Zabbix would be. Um, even in the in the trainings, there is uh, some some values that you can use for like estimation of um, of the storage of the database, etc. Um, but at the same time, it's also something quite um, quite individual. So many of our customers they go and start with something small and start migrating as they need to something bigger. So the, the, the typical uh, little Zabbix installation is maybe just one VM, just one server containing everything, the database and, 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 and the Zabbix server and even the front end. And then we start growing and scaling up. So this is from my point of view also a, a viable way of doing it. And of course, if you plan like from the very beginning, you would probably go more for a distributed environment or go uh, with proxies and with a separate database server or even database cluster. But yeah, um, whichever approach, there is no wrong and no true, no, no wrong and no correct here. Yeah, it's a good idea probably to like double your initial estimation because especially when people just starting out, they could think about the most major things they need to monitor. And whenever everything is already spinning up, they're like, oh, we could actually add like this, this, exactly. this, this, and that, which doubles everything. So that's nice. And uh, talking about like, I don't know, you probably call it like type of installation. So there are many ways how you can get Zabbix up and running, like packages, sources, clouds, uh, physical hardware. Any recommendations um, in, in case of if we really plan to achieve maximum scale, very heavy instance, a lot of new values per second and stuff like that. Are there some benefits in each of those? Maybe containers, Kubernetes, again, so a lot of options, which is better? Basically, all these, all the deployment options of Savix work very well. 
Um, traditionally, of course, most of our installations that we have are on VMs or on servers. Even some of them, even though very little ones, are on, on bare metal. Um, but we are seeing more and more the need to, yeah, to deploy uh, Zabbix components as containers. Um, mostly for environments that are more like um, more dynamic and you might not have one Zabbix server like to monitor the entire IT environment but you might have several Zabbix servers around which are smaller instances but um, deployed in a, in, a, in a quick way just to monitor let's say a certain part of the infrastructure that is maybe not even being there forever but just being for a project for example so um, for, for these kind of things uh, of course the containers are much uh, much easier to manage because they pretty much give you a standardized way of running Zabbix on top of basically whatever uh, you can run those containers in, in Docker, you can use Kubernetes, you can do this in OpenShift, but it will always have the same behavior inside because these container images are standardized, they are developed by Zabbix, they are reviewed by Zabbix, so we can be sure that these are working exactly the way we are expecting them to work. And, and that's definitely a big benefit. Uh, we are using containers not, as, as mentioned, not in all the Zabbix server environments. So if the Zabbix server is more like monolithic or more like um, centralized and, 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 and big, um, I believe that there is uh, still benefits of using the packages, um, the official packages, of course, which are available for all the operating systems um, out there, so from the Red Hat or Ubuntu and whatever uh, that's basically choice of the customer and but when we look at the Zabbix proxies um, depending also on the environment there might be hundreds or even thousands of Zabbix proxies out there and the Zabbix proxy is such a little piece of software that it makes it basically very very easy to deploy this using containers and a good thing about the proxies, so like mostly we talk about the proxies when we speak about like distributed monitoring, some different locations, different offices, countries, cities, whatever. Um, can we also use the proxies to just distribute the load in, in the same location? Like if Definitely. everything is in our environment, is it better to have split it in hundreds, thousands of the proxies instead of capturing everything in one Zabbix server? Yeah. In, in our trainings, we tend to say that an ideal Zabbix server does not gather any data by itself. Um, ideally, you have every data collection being SNMP, being the communication with the Zabbix agents, and whatever else you might have uh, distributed to Zabbix proxies. And with this, you have a yeah, this store and forward method, method where when your Zabbix server needs to go down for, I don't know, an outage or even a maintenance, um, you still continue collecting the data and you cache this data and the proxies will push the data to the Zabbix server afterwards. So yes, uh, in, in terms of good design, uh, um, Zabbix proxies not only for the distribution but also for offloading the Zabbix server from a lot of work, not only the data gathering, but, only, uh, but also the uh, data pre-processing conversion, which gets more and more importance in Zabbix when we talk about API monitoring, application monitoring. So you don't anymore collect only simple metrics and values. You, you now go more and more the way to collect big bunches of data and by the pre-processing options in Zabbix, you format and reformat this data in a way to, to use it for the actual monitoring. And this is of course also a factor of load for, uh, for a Zabbix server and, and good that this part is also being able to distribute it to the, uh, to the Zabbix proxies. Okay, and uh, somehow in the Spotlight videos we always touch a little bit about the skills required to actually manage all of that. And if we talk about 
Zabbix and also large small installation. I think that Zabbix is quite forgiving uh, in the small installations. You can have some mistakes. You can have default config files of the database, not the best hardware, not the best de design. And uh, if you're running on some hundreds of NVPS, I don't know, for someone it could be like big, for, for someone it's small, it is forgiving. But when we are reaching those tens, thousands, 20, 30, 40, 50, you need to do more and more like little things, little tunings. How do you think uh, from your experience, what are those skills that are actually required to fine tune your Zabbix environment? I'm not talking only like about the front end, but database, uh, front end web engine server, maybe file system. Uh, maybe there's some better choice in uh, operating system version, some distribution, something about that. Not such an easy question, actually. Um, I would say everything starts with really understanding how Zabbix works. Um, for that, of course, the trainings are very valuable, even for people working with Zabbix years. Um, still, the trainings are very helpful to, to really get this understanding on how do things really work internally of Zabbix. And if I push this button and um, save this kind of configuration that I did, what is actually happening inside and, and, and what effects can this have? Um, let's say, for example, it is so easy to just change the timeout in the Sabic server to something bigger value because, well, it looks like there shouldn't be a bad effect on it. And then suddenly things happen like, yeah, some kind of processes start to get very loaded. and so. Yes, understanding on how Zabbix works, or as we in the trainings usually say, uh, Zabbix will always behave 100% uh, in the way as you uh, expect, but you have to expect the right thing. And <laughs> that's what we say in the trainings. And yeah, so um, I would encourage everybody who works with Zabbix in a serious way, if, if, if so to say, um, to visit those trainings and it's really very very helpful um, there's a lot of in detail information even in in the specialist training um, that that really helps to understand how to fine-tune what happens inside and how to to make the Sabix a, a robust and always working monitoring tool that's a great thing like uh, of course we have a lot of information available online, documentation and stuff like that. But the best thing were to find information about all the internals and how one parameter affects some absolutely different things in the Zabbix is the Zabbix training with the, with the trainers who are who have like lots of years of experience behind them. And if you just think that, hey, I have a powerful server and I will just max out all the parameters in the Zabbix server config file, that's definitely not a good idea, right? So it's no. it's gonna cause even more problems than, yeah. than good. So yeah, if you're really planning to create some big powerful Zabbix environment, then you're welcome to, to the trainings to get all of that knowledge. And uh, so, Thank you for your experience. Thank you for sharing everything you know about this uh, scaling stuff. Um, we'll definitely see you around. So thank you guys for watching and see you later. Thank you.